And so I'd been reading lots of things and then thinking that if you could approach design and do it in a rigorous way where you could detect design, that would really help this debate. So what's the backstory on writing the first edition of the Design Inference? Um, I mean, you can go back quite a ways. Uh, I would say it was in the late 80s. I was a postdoc at MIT. I was planning on being a standard sort of research mathematician, but I was struck by how uh, a naturalistic worldview just seemed to dominate the academy. And I thought, what's it going to take to overturn that? I, approached this as a theistic believer. And it struck me that design was at the center of that. So I had been reading evolutionary literature. Um, and it's interesting, I read both Dar uh, Dawkins' The Blind Watchmaker and Michael Denton's Evolution of Theory and Crisis. And for me, these were pivotal events, reading them, much as they were for Philip Johnson around the same time. So I was really, though, by myself, um, uh, just thinking through these ideas, uh, there was a, a scholar scientist named A.E. Wilder Smith who'd been uh, done some thinking about information theory, how it might apply to biology, uh, but I thought he hadn't really developed these ideas with any rigor. And so I'd been reading lots and lots of things and then thinking that if you could approach design and do it in a rigorous way where you could detect design, uh, that's, that would really help this debate. And so I started writing about these ideas. Uh, the first publication really on it was a book, as a, uh, an article for the philosophy journal News. It was called Randomness by Design. And I really turned the problem of randomness on its head because the idea with randomness is that it's something that looks very uh, mixed up. But if you see a pattern in it, then it's no longer random. And once you see the pattern that's there, you don't unsee the pattern. And so, uh, so I turned the problem on its head and I said that randomness is really parasitic on design. It only makes sense to talk about randomness as long as we haven't seen a salient pattern there. And then I developed that idea. It actually got me quite a bit of play in the philosophical literature. I ended up writing the randomness article for the big Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy that came out in 1998. Uh, but then one thing led to another, and then I started thinking, well, what are the sorts of patterns that we actually use to infer design? And so the germ of these ideas in the design inference came out in a paper that I did for, a uh, long paper for the Association of Christians in the Mathematical Sciences. And so I uh, did a paper there and then for the American Scientific Affiliation, just getting these ideas out. And somehow I got on the radar of Steve Meyer and Paul Nelson. Somehow, well, they, they were reading my stuff. I, I'd I think uh, Paul Nelson had seen Randomness by Design and I think Steve Meyer had seen an article that I did on artificial intelligence uh, in, the, in an ASA journal. And uh, that, they brought me into that whole group. And, you know, and then it was uh, with Phil Johnson, Mike Behe, and others. And that was really very helpful. I mean, it was, it was a very fruitful time of interchange, and that led to me advancing these ideas for the design inference. I was in a doctoral program, second doctoral program. I had done a PhD in mathematics and finished it in 1988 at the University of Chicago. And so I was doing a second doctorate in the history and philosophy of science. And that degree had gotten stalled. I'd worked with one professor. He left the program, I worked with another professor. He left the program. Third professor who uh, just uh, never got on board. This was a dissertation on the logic of conditionals. And so I really, I scrapped that whole dissertation and just started afresh uh, based on the sorts of conversations I was having with Steve Meyer and other people, and then uh, wrote the design inference in a year as a student at Princeton Theological Seminary. So it was, uh, it was my second year, MDivs are three-year program. So I, uh, I wrote it then, submitted it, and it was accepted. Same person who had refused this other dissertation said, oh yeah, this is all right. And it got a dissertation prize 
uh, from the university, this is the University of Illinois, Chicago, which at the time was a very strong place for philosophy of science. And um, then submitted it to Cambridge University Press. I knew an editor there. And uh, he liked it enough to shepherd it through, went, went past three referees, and then it uh, was accepted. And so that's, that's the, the history. And, you know, it was, it was uh, well accepted at the time because in the book I did not focus on intelligent design as in biology or cosmology. It was just here's this method of design detection. I applied it in a number of places where it was uncontroversial, you know, forensic science, cryptography, uh, even search for extraterrestrial intelligence, that's okay. But uh, uh, challenging Darwin, that's a bridge too far. So, but that's, that's the, the history.